The domain of a function f of x equals to u, where u is an expression, is usually negative infinity to infinity, which means for all values the graph will exist, with the following two common exceptions. If f of x is a rational expression, which means it contains a fraction, since division by zero leads to an undefined answer, the denominator b cannot equal to zero. Okay, so the denominator cannot equal to zero. If you have a function f of x equals the square root of a, since the square root of a negative number is imaginary, the expression a can only have a value of zero or higher. So a has to be greater than or equal to zero. Here's an example. Let's find the domain of f of x equals to 3x squared minus 5x plus 3 in interval notation. So let's ask ourselves two questions. Does this expression contain a, a fraction or a square root? It does not. So our domain is going to be negative infinity, comma, infinity. So in other words, is there any value of x for which we cannot calculate f of x? We can plug in any value of x. It can be positive, it can be negative, it could be 0, and we could calculate f of x. Therefore, the domain is all real numbers, or negative infinity, comma, infinity. If we were to graph this, then our graph would contain all real numbers. Next. Let's find the domain of f of x equals to x plus 3 over x minus 4 in interval notation. Now, anytime you're asked to find the domain, you're always going to ask yourself two questions. One, does your expression contain a fraction? It does. So what does that mean? In a fraction, if we take 0 divided by any number, the answer is 0. So this can be evaluated. However, if we take a number divided by 0, this is undefined. So our denominator cannot be 0, but our numerator can. So we don't really want to worry about the x plus 3, because our numerator, if it's 0, it makes no difference. We can still evaluate it. However, our denominator, it cannot equal to 0. Our denominator, b, cannot equal to 0. Because if it was, we would have a 0 denominator, and we would have an undefined uh, value for the expression. So is there any value for x which we cannot calculate f of x? Yes x minus 4 cannot equal to 0, which means that x cannot equal to 4. What would happen if it was 4? If you wanted to find out what is f of 4, that's going to be 4 plus 3 divided by 4 minus 4. 7 over 0, that's undefined. So x cannot be 4. Okay, x cannot equal to 4. So here's the easiest way to list the domain using interval notation. We take a number line and we find our domain. So our domain, it cannot be 4. Remember, x cannot equal to 4. So at 4, I'm going to have an open circle. Okay. Now, uh, our values can be our, our, our domain, anything to the left of 4 approaching negative infinity, it's OK. Anything to the right of 4 approaching positive infinity, this is also OK. So this is OK, this is OK. x just cannot equal to 4. 4 is our only restriction. So our domain is going to be negative infinity comma 4 with the parentheses because 4 is not included. Union 4 comma infinity. So this basically says that our domain is everything from negative infinity to infinity except for 4, which has parentheses around it. And because a 4 breaks up the number line into two separate intervals, we need a u for the, for the union. OK, here's another example. Find the domain of f of x equals to the square root of x plus 5. We ask ourselves two questions. Does this contain a fraction? No. Does our expression contain a square root? Yes. So there, there is going to be some kind of restriction that the square root, uh, the, a, the expression, has to be greater than or equal to 0. So the question is, is there any value of x which we cannot evaluate f of x? Well, I'm going to give you an example. What if x was negative 6? Then we would get square root of negative 6 plus 5. That's square root of negative 1. That's imaginary. We can't evaluate that in a, or calculate that in a real number system. So for our domain, the expression x plus 5, it can only have a value of 0 or greater, which means x can only have, have a value of greater than or equal to negative 5. That's why negative 6 was not in, the, in our domain, because negative 6 is less than negative 5. OK, 
Okay, if you were to graph this, when you have a greater than or equal to, remember we get a bracket on negative 5, and you want the set of all numbers that are greater than or equal to negative 5, so that means our numbers are going to get bigger and bigger and approach infinity. So in interval notation, our domain is going to be negative 5 comma infinity. If you're given a graph, domain is a set of all x values for which the graph exists, and the range is set of all the y values for which the graph exists. So let's take a look at part A. Domain, we're looking at all the x values for which the graph exists. So again, I'm only looking at the x's. Now the graph starts here, and it exists for all the values of x up until, neg up until positive 1. So my domain, there's an open circle on negative 3, which means negative 3 is not included in my domain. So it's going to be parentheses negative 3. There's a closed circle on 1, so 1 is included in my domain. So my domain is negative 3 comma 1. Now for the range, uh, let's take a for the range. Let's take a look at the y values for which the graph exists. Okay, so my now y values I'm looking vertically. My smallest y value is going to be this one, negative four. That is the smallest y value for which the graph exists. So the graph exists. The graph exists. The graph exists. But when we get here to y equals to zero the graph doesn't exist above that. Okay, so our range, if, if we're looking vertically, is going to be negative 4, comma, 0. So the, the graph only exists for the y values of negative 4 to 0. Now this can get kind of tricky because we sometimes students confuse the x values and the y values, but remember, when you're looking at range, we're only looking at the y values for which the graph exists. So our range is going to be negative 4, the, this point is included, comma 1. Now even though there's an open circle here, this point on the graph, it includes the, it includes the y value of 0, so we're going to have, sorry, there should be a 0, so we're going to have a bracket. Okay, so our, our, our range is negative 4 to 0 because that's, those are the y values for which the graph exists. All right, let's do the next one. For the next graph, uh, we want to find the smallest x value for which the graph exists. So for x values of like negative 10, negative 9, negative 8, negative 7, the graph doesn't exist. The graph only starts existing for the x value of negative 6. And then as we get higher and higher, this arrow just means that the graph is going to keep existing, going to the right of negative 6. There's a closed circle, so our domain is going to be negative 6 comma infinity. It exists for all values of x that are negative 6 and greater. Now let's look at the range. Remember, for the range, we're looking vertically. So we're looking for what is the smallest y value for which the graph exists. So negative 2, the graph doesn't exist. Negative 1, no. 0, no. The smallest y value for which the graph exists is going to be this one, which is the y value of 1. And then for all the y values above that, the graph is going to exist because it's going to keep going and keep going and keep going. So for the range, we're looking at the y values. The smallest one is going to be this one right here. Smallest y value for which the graph exists is 1. So our range is going to be 1 comma infinity. Okay, next one. This graph, let's look at the smallest x value for which the graph exists. For x equals negative 4, the graph doesn't exist. For x equals negative 3, it does. So this is the smallest x value for which the graph exists. So we're going to keep going, we're going to keep going. This is the highest x value because after 1, the graph does not exist. So our domain, at negative 3, this, is, this point is included, so we have bracket negative 3. At 1, this point is not included, so it's going to be parentheses 1. That's going to be our domain. Now for the range, we have to look at all the y values for which the graph exists. The smallest y value for which the graph exists is going to be this one, negative 5. Now going up, the graph exists, the graph exists, it exists, exists, exists. It exists all the way up to 4. This is the highest y value for which the graph exists. So our range is going to be from negative 5 all the way to 4. Negative 5, this point is closed, so that's included. So we got bracket negative 5. This point is also closed, that's also included, so that's going to be 4. 
Now sometimes students look at this point and accidentally put 3 as the, the upper limit of the range. However, the graph doesn't stop there. It keeps going to 4. So 4 is actually the upper limit for the range. OK, so now we're going to talk about um, increasing, decreasing, and constant intervals. All right, so a function is increasing on an interval if as x increases, f of x also increases. It's decreasing over an interval if as x increases, f of x decreases. A function is constant if as x increases, f of x remains constant. A relative maximum. Let me change the color real quick. Relative maximum is a point where the function changes direction from increasing to decreasing, making that point a peak in the graph. So like this would be a relative maximum where the function goes from increasing to decreasing. A relative minimum is a point where the function changes direction from decreasing to increasing. So this would be like a relative minimum. OK, so uh, let's take a look at an example. The function has a relative maximum. So let's take a look at our graph and see where does a function go from increasing to decreasing. So this is going up, 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 increasing. And then here it changes directions and starts decreasing. So this point is going to be a relative maximum. So the function has a relative maximum of, now when it says of, we're talking about the y value. So the y value for this point is negative 2. So the relative maximum of negative 2 at which x value? The x value is negative 4. So the value is always a y. And then at which x, it's going to be negative 4. Now the relative minimum, the graph decreases, decreases. At this point, it goes from being decreasing to increasing. So it's going to, uh, this is going to be the relative minimum. There's a relative minimum of, now the y value here is negative 6, and the x value is going to be 0. So this point here is 0, negative 6. So the, the y value is negative 6, and it happens at x equals to 0. Now, where is the function increasing? So we're always going to be looking at this going left to right. Okay. Now, the function is increasing here. It's going up here. And it's also increasing here in this interval. So we're going to say that the function is increasing. Now, when you talk about an interval, we're always looking at the x value. So we're looking at for which values of x is this function increasing. So it's increasing from x equals negative infinity to x equals negative 4. It's increasing on this interval. So on, for these x values, the graph is going up. So from negative infinity all the way to negative 4, the graph is increasing. And even though it's a closed circle, we're going to put a parenthesis because at negative 4, the graph isn't increasing or decreasing. The graph is constant. So we're going to put a parenthesis on negative 4. Then the graph starts going down. It's decreasing. But then starting at negative 6, the graph is going to increase again. Okay. Now, this is where students sometimes get confused. This, this is a y value. When we're looking for the interval, we actually want the x value, which is going to be 0. So when x equals to 0, the graph starts increasing. And as the x's get bigger and bigger, the graph keeps increasing. So it's also going to be increasing on the interval 0, comma infinity. Okay. Where is the function decreasing? It's decreasing on this interval right here. It's decreasing between x equals negative 4 and x equals to 0. Again, don't look at the y values. We're only looking at the x values for the intervals. So the function is decreasing on the interval negative 4, comma, 0. Once again, we're going to use parentheses because at the endpoints here, the graph isn't increasing nor decreasing. Finally, we got to find the domain and range. The graph exists for all x values, so the domain is going to be negative infinity, comma, infinity. For any x value, the graph is going to exist. The range is also going to be negative infinity, comma, infinity, because for any y value, the graph is also going to exist.